<clears throat> Good day, folks. This is Great Judy at Green Pastures Farm. Whew. It's a brutal one out there this morning. It said uh, 25 mile an hour winds. And uh, the temperature out was, I think, three below. So whatever that is, I don't know. It's cold. <laughs> and uh, Joel and I were able to get over here. And I was really anxious to see what our Wilson water valve was doing. Kind of wondered if it might be froze this morning because this is, we call this Windy Ridge. That's north. <clears throat> it's always a wind tunnel. I don't know what it is. It's almost like nature's got this wind tunnel down the top of this ridge. But I thought if it's going to freeze, if it freeze last night, um, we did uh, increase the volume of the overflow yesterday. And then uh, Joel and I went over there and took sleeping bags <laughs> and wrapped. We didn't wrap it. We just doubled the sleeping bag, put blocks on it all the way over to the tank. So we ran out of sleeping bags. So what'd you do, Joel? I uh, heaped snow over the t over the hose there. <laughs> kind of act as an insulator. Insulator blanket. You know what? That snow is pretty good insulator too. I tell you why. Um, I just pulled a couple of these step ins up over here to get the bailing roller back across the fence, and um, I couldn't believe it. That ground is not froze under that snow. Now it will be, I think, in time, but. Uh, I just, I didn't have a problem at all sticking the post back in the ground after uh, pulling it out. So I was surprised, but uh, you give it another couple days of this temperature, I'm sure the ground will be like concrete out here. It's going to be hard. But Joel and I, the, the bulls were clear over by that house on that far ridge down in the cedars, uh, just east of that house. So I knew they wouldn't come over here. So what we did is we unrolled the hay and I left about... I don't know, maybe a hundred pounds of hay on the unroller that I didn't unroll. And we took it over there and Joel got behind them. I got in front and as soon as they saw that unroller, that little clump of hay on there, they come walking up out of there and uh, they followed us over here. And on the way over, I did drop them a little piece and they had to stop and clean that up. But now they're all happily eating. The hay, this is the first hay bale we've unrolled, and today is January 13th. It's yeah. actually the 13th this time. <laughs> Joel's like, Greg, you said it was the 13th yesterday, and I'm like, yeah. Today is January 13th. It's a Saturday, and it's really uh, inhospitable out here as far as humans, and we don't have that winter hair coat on like those bulls do. But the sun's up, and actually when that sun came up, it got a little bit more warm. I'm gonna take one for the team. I'm gonna go out here. I don't have my gloves on. Maybe put that one glove on my left hand. The other one. Here's what I do. I, I, there's my hand warmer. And there. Now, do the other hand. If I'm gonna take one for the team. I'm gonna make sure my hands are warm. There we go. I'm gonna go show you this water because I know you're not gonna believe it. It is the truth. I took my glasses off because I couldn't see. You don't realize how much wind that those glasses block from your eyeballs. Um, <laughs> they got fogged over pretty quick. But we did pet the cat method, so I still went through up there. Went all the way down that ridge, came back up the ridge. I still had a little hay left over. So we got to spread out. Anyway. That's why we call it Windy Ridge. Look at that. There's just a tiny, tiny little bit of frost around the outside of that tank. Folks, it's 25 below right at it with the wind chill. Now, these 4 by 8 sheets of plywood are definitely helping knock the wind off of it. But, you know, there's my hose. It's laying right on top of the ground. I don't have a sleeping bag over this part of it. Over there I did. I'm going to the, well, that's where Joel put the snow on. All the way back to the shed. And then on the exit over there, I did put a blanket over that and put a couple blocks of wood on the exit. So the cold north wind, see it had a direct shot at it. There's north. I thought if that overflow would start 
kind of cap it over a little bit. That's all it would take. And then it would start back freezing all the way back to the tank, and then I'd have a mess. Because the, the overflow wouldn't be working, of course, because the pipe was froze shut. Your water's coming up over the top of this tank, and now you got a, it's just a mess. We got this set up pretty good. 25 below. Water flowing. There's their feed. They do have some cedars right over that hill there. They get down that draw. They want to escape the wind. I'll bet when they fill up. There's a nice little area right down there. By a dam. There's some cedars there. And I did unroll some hay down there. So I'm guessing that's where they're going to be. This is the first bale they've had. Uh, the great Judy bale and roller came out this morning. And uh, it like a jam. Five below four wheeler. The four wheeler started. We didn't have to fire up a you know sixty, seventy thousand dollar tractor, four wheel drive tractor to get out here and feed the animals. So it is uh, a pretty good little tool, especially for smaller farms. And you know how many people can afford to buy? Fifty to hundred thousand dollar tractor to feed ten cows doesn't make sense economically. Maybe people doing it, but uh, it's not real smart to do that. Um, so yeah, the the bulls have got their feed, they got their water. This is that Wilson. You go to Russ Wilson's uh, website. Wilson Landing Cattle. He sells. Them. You see that little pet pot right there? Yep. Here's my tool. Cut a notch in it, and this goes right. I'm not going to mess with it. I got to set there. It is. See, I've got it on there right now. If I turn righty tidy, I'm going to cut the flow down. If I open it up left, it's going to open it. I don't have it wide open. I would say it's a little over half, maybe three quarters. But you can definitely hear the water if I shut up. See, it's coming out right there. There's nothing drinking, so it's coming out right there. And look at look at that water movement in there. And there's some serious water movement in there, and it's going out right here. That's my little. You get all of it. You get that little uh, brass piece. You drill a hole in your tank. You put that on. That's where your overflow pipe goes, and then that's your brass valve that you get from Russ, uh, Russ Wilson. And uh, you know what, I got two of them. I got one for this one, and I got one for the, the big cow mob. And uh, I really had my doubts. I had a guy come up to me the other day at the Green Hills Farm Project. I love him to death, I'm Dennis, and he goes, Frank, I wanna see what it does when you get 25 below. <laughs> and I looked at him, I'm like, Dennis, I wanna see what it does too. So, there you go, Dennis. It's still cranking. This is off of pressurized water. Folks, if you're on a water line and you're, you've got really expensive water, probably wouldn't want to do it. Uh, we are very uh, fortunate. We live on a water district where the water's not quite as expensive. And uh, so we can let the water run. And we're only, we got four days, and then I'm going to crank it back down to my 24 gallons in 24 hours. But right now, it's running more than that. And you know what? 25 below out here. I didn't have to chop ice this morning. The bulls will get him a nice drink and life is good on the farm. That's right, life is good on the farm. So, yeah. I'm gonna get out of here. This is a day you don't want to be hanging around outside. It just freezes to death. And uh, so, y'all have a good one and we'll see you next time. Hope to see some of y'all at our grazing school in May. Go to our web our webpage, greenpasturesfarm.net, check that out and we'll see you, see you next time.